Home sweet dome. Your Saints wrapped up their second practice inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Hi, everybody, and welcome into the New Orleans Saints training camp show on CST for Thursday, September 3rd. I'm Caroline Gonzalez, alongside my partner in crime, senior writer for NewOrleansSaints.com, John DeShazer. J.D., you were inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome today. How did it feel? Well, felt like a, a practice in the dome, pretty empty, uh, pretty similar to what Saturday's practice was from that standpoint. Um, you're just not ever accustomed to not seeing bodies in here for an event, and especially for a football game. But it was a football practice. We have seen the Saints practice in here without fans before. So that part of it they're accustomed to, you know, and the lighting and all those things, you know, some guys need to get acclimated to that. Well, Sean Payton and players spoke after practice on their acclimation process inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. What we're going to deal with, every every team in the league is going to have kind of an ambient crowd noise at, se at 70 decibels. And so we had it at 70 for most of the practice. And then when music's played, it'll be at 75. Um, and that, that, that really is for week one. That obviously can be adjusted based on... Uh, where this thing goes relative to fans. So we had it on 70 and uh, we had the music at 75. It always feel good to, to be in the Superdome, but it's definitely a little weird. Uh, we put a little crowd noise in, the amount of crowd noise that we'll be able to be in the uh, dome this year. So we got to get a little feel of how loud it's going to be. Not, not even close to how loud it is, uh, usually is on Sunday, but it's definitely good to get a feel of how it's going to be. J.D., we are 10 days out now from the first game inside the Superdome. How have the Saints approached wrinkling out game day situations that they're going to see come Sunday? Well, as best you can, you try to simulate it, and whether that be uh, TV timeouts, whether that be halftime situations, whether that be penalty situations, all of those type of at things were gone through uh, in this atmosphere today. What they wanted to do was get as close as they could to some of the situations that you encounter in a game. Well, head coach Sean Payton spoke after practice today. Hear what he had to say about getting used to those game day situations. It's a, it's a rehearsal and we're trying to cover every detail possible. There's a few changes as to where we're at in our locker room based on uh, the policies this year. Um, all of these things uh, so that on game day, there's, there's, there's no surprises. Well, it was another day of rest for quarterback Drew Brees, who is approaching his 20th season in the NFL, which is crazy to think about. But that led to more reps for Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston today. Head coach Sean Payton spoke about those reps following practice today. We get a chance in a practice like this or like yesterday where we get a ton of reps for, for both Taysom and Jameis. Um, this is kind of part of the part of the plan schedule and uh, We've kind of mapped out when we want players going, especially when it comes to the quarterback position. All right, when we come back, we'll hear from Andres Pete, the offensive lineman for your New Orleans Saints. Don't go anywhere. You're watching New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CST. Welcome back to the New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CST. I'm Caroline Gonzalez alongside my partner in crime in John DeShazer, J.D. Andres Pete, the starting lineman, starting offensive lineman, excuse me, for the New Orleans Saints, has suffered some injuries the last few seasons for the Saints, but noted he wanted to fix that into this offseason. What have you seen out of him? Well, he's healthy, and that's the main thing. Uh, he came in different in, in different shape conditioning-wise, but he's healthy, and that's, again, significant for him because he's a vital part of what the Saints do on the offensive line. We know how versatile he is. He can play left guard. Uh, the times that Teron Armstead has been injured, he's been able from time to time to kick out to left tackle. So that kind of versatility is difficult to duplicate. It's hard to find, and that adds to his value. Well, Andre spoke earlier this week about what he did to go through that physical transformation. It really wasn't a diet change. Um, I just really, uh, I started uh, training like right after the last game. So, uh, you know, obviously I missed some time uh, during the season and came back for the last last game and a half. So I felt, you know, pretty, pretty fresh overall, you know, uh, besides my arm that I, you know, had surgery on. But I really uh, try to put an emphasis on that uh, this offseason, really uh, 
starting off with uh, just the weight room and uh, conditioning. So I feel like it's definitely going to be beneficial just being able to, you know, finish blocks and uh, sustain and, uh, you know, feel, feel, feel uh, more athletic and feel better out there. So it's definitely going to be good. JD, when you think of offensive linemen, you don't necessarily think of conditioning. You think that more so with the skill positions, the guys who are going up and down the field. But how much conditioning would you say actually goes into that offensive line position? Well, it's not like you care uh, which offensive lineman is the fastest in the NFL in the 40-yard dash. Uh, you don't see those guys 40 yards downfield. They do their damage within the first you know, five, ten yards and then everything else is kind of break loose. But you do need those guys to be in condition enough to play 60, 70 snaps a game. That's grueling, especially when you're pushing on another 300 pound human being for that entire time. So that's where the conditioning comes in, where guys can finish the game, hopefully as strong as they started the game. Well, offensive line coach Dan Rochar spoke on Pete's conditioning this year and the physical transformation he's undergone. Well, you know, when you're leaner, uh, you certainly are, uh, we see some, some additional quickness to him. Uh, we felt like early we saw explosion prior to, you know, that, that setback. And then um, you'll, you'll, I think the, the one thing that will happen is his conditioning levels will stay higher. He'll, he will be able to finish stronger um, as the game goes on and uh, his endurance will then have improved. Well, on August 18th of this year, it was reported that Andres Pete went through a thumb injury or suffered a thumb injury and was going to be out for two to three weeks. Now, we know that Pete did come back to practice this week. And Dan Rochar, offensive line coach for the Saints, spoke about how he's dealing with that thumb injury. I think uh, our medical staff and Anderson have, have worked out something that looks like it's going to be really favorable. Just watching him today, he has exposure to, to uh, all of his fingers, and so that that's really going to be big. Um, you know, anytime, anytime you have a, an injury like that, um, it makes it even more challenging. But, uh, you know, he's dealt with these things in the past. And, Doug, I would expect him to each and every week improve. And in, in between now and, and uh, game week, we need to see him make improvements each and every day in practice. But, uh, you know, he's got experience. Um, he's played with these things before. And, and um, the one thing I've been most encouraged with is it's obvious – his off season was outstanding for him. He's, he's so much lighter. He's leaner. He's in the best shape that we've seen him in. And uh, you could see that uh, prior to the injury, and you saw it again today. All right, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll hear from rookie tight end Adam Troutman. You're watching the New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CST. Welcome back into the New Orleans Saints training camp show here on CSC. I'm Caroline Gonzalez. Earlier this year when the Saints drafted tight end Adam Troutman out of Dayton, they knew that he was going to have to go through an acclimation period. No OTAs, no mini camp. Troutman spoke on that acclimation period following practice today. Um, I feel like I've acclimated well. Um, for me, you know, it was just coming in and getting used to the speed uh, of the game. Um, obviously the size difference in guys that I played in college uh, versus, you know, Camp Jordan, Marcus Davenport, Marcus Hunt, like all those defensive ends, you know, uh, we got some big guys there. So I'm um, just kind of getting used to that. But I feel like um, knowledge wise, you know, I get better every single day knowing assignments and what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just a process get better every single day. Obviously, I didn't have OTAs or uh, rookie mini camp to, to kind of get my feet wet. So just kind of going along with it day by day and, and trying to get better every single day. We now bring back in senior writer John DeShazer. JD, it, it broke news last night that the Bucks were going to sign running back Leonard Fournette after he was released from the Jags. What are your thoughts on the Bucks signing Fournette? Well, they pretty much added another star quality type player to their lineup now. Here in New Orleans, obviously, we're familiar with Fournette, a St. Augustine High School graduate, uh, standout high school player, uh, one of the best players in state history, and also a standout at LSU. So we're quite familiar with him in these parts. And the Saints are somewhat familiar with him, obviously. He, they were around here when he was in high school. So a lot of the players who were on the team at that time know of him. And some of these guys played against him last season when he played for the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Well, look, I, we're familiar with the player, certainly with his career at LSU. It was fabulous. And then uh, I think it was a couple of years back in Jacksonville, we had a chance to play against him. So that, that obviously is a good addition for Tampa Bay. It's a, another weapon, another type of runner um, that you have to uh, account for. And so, uh, yeah, we're, I think we're pretty familiar with his skill set and the things that he does well. All right, that'll do it for today's edition of the New Orleans Saints training camp show. We will be back tomorrow. But before we wrap things up here, an announcement made by the New Orleans Saints and Pelicans yesterday. The New Orleans Saints, Pelicans, and the NFL donation, or excuse me, NFL Foundation have pledged half a million dollars to help with Hurricane Laura relief. And there is a part for you to participate, Saints fans. Next week, the Saints Pelicans will be launching a fundraiser where you can donate and help relief for Hurricane Laura. So keep an eye out on that. It'll be available on NewOrleansSaints.com and the Saints app. For John DeShazer, Caroline Gonzalez, we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of the New Orleans Saints Training Camp Show here on CST.